Hey guys, welcome back to another video for my tabletop simulator series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can promote your game and how you should submit it to class. All right, so if you've been following along with the videos, you should know how to make a game and more importantly, how to submit it to the workshop. Now, if you need a little refresher on that, that's fine. I'll run through it in the first couple minutes. All right, so let's have a look at how you put your games on the Steam Workshop again. Now, I've talked about this in the past, so this is just a really quick review of some of the key points in doing that. And to show you this, I'm just going to open the Hive room that I made when I was actually explaining you in full detail how to do this. Now, if I double click that room and I load it, you'll see that this happens. It says that there is an unknown format and I get this interface for adding a custom tile. So the reason why that is happening is because when I made this room, I saved some files as local as opposed to uploading it to the cloud server. So since I deleted those files on my hard drive, they're no longer there and I can no longer see them. So whenever you're faced with this issue, you're gonna have to reload the files. Um, now I don't have them here anymore, so I'm gonna just replace them with a standard JPEG and you typically want to upload them to the cloud so that this won't happen again in the future. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to load them locally again. And there you go. That makes the issue go away. And the tile that was missing has now been replaced with an image that I had on my desktop, which is the game board for the game Rising Sun. So this really highlights the importance of uploading everything to your cloud so you can see anything that's in there with the cloud manager eventually it'll get really full so my recommendation would be to use a prefix for every file you upload it makes it a lot easier to find assets that are associated with a certain game for example everything with dags of war for me has the prefix dow so if i want any of those files i can just type it into the search and i'll find everything easier just a little tip to make things a little nicer for you. You can also see here in the cloud manager, it has a limit, but it's pretty big. It's about a hundred gigabytes. So yeah, even with all the mods that I've been making, I'm not even scratching the surface there. So once you've got your stuff on the workshop, so if you do that with workshop upload and you fill out the field, as I explained in a previous video. So once you've done that, you should be able to do shift tap and then go to the community hub, find the workshop and go look for your game on there. So under files you've posted, and the Hive game's right there. So I wanted to give you guys a couple more quick comments about it. First off, you can enter your payment info here. If you want to sell your mods, you could actually do that. I've never done that myself. I've sold games on Steam, but not uh, tabletop simulator mods, but it's something you could look into if you'd be interested in doing something like that. And the most important part here, which I hope you already know by now, is you need to change the visibility of your mod to whatever setting is best. I explained all that in a previous video. Now to get to the real part of this video, how do you get people to actually go play your mod? Well, um, a good way to do that is to edit your title and description. And in the description, put a lot of information about the mod and whatever game it might refer to. But it's also a good idea to get a Discord server going and put the link of the Discord server in there so that people can find other people to play the game with. Another way to get people to come to Tabletop Simulator and play your mod actually is Discord. Uh, you might remember the Tabletop Simulator Club and the, the Tabletop Simulator official Discord servers. And both of those have ways for you to get people to your mod. So Tabletop Simulator Club has the Workshop Showcase channel. And in there you'll find all these mods that have been posted by people. And whenever you do an update, you're even invited to put a link to your mod there. So this can bring in a ton of people because there's a lot of people on the Tabletop Simulator Club Discord channel. The official Tabletop Simulator Discord channel uh, or server has something like that as well. Um, it's under modding in Spotlight. And again, you can just post whichever mod you've been working on there and it'll draw some people into your Tabletop Simulator workshop page for the mod. Now, if you are working on a mod that is actually a version of a real game that you're putting on Tabletop Simulator, I would also recommend Board Game Geek. If you make yourself an account on Board Game Geek, you can pretty much look for any game that you like. For example, say Dogs of War, um, like so. And well, there's going to be a whole lot of fans of that game on that page in the forum. So if you go on the forum and you post that you've made a tabletop simulator mod of that game, it's going to draw in a pretty big crowd to your mod as well. So those would be my tips to get people to play your game. Advertise on the Discord servers or advertise on BoardGameGeek if it's a pre-existing game. And with doing that, you can easily 
get up to a thousand users pretty quickly. And if you're doing a mod for a game that's trending on Kickstarter or that's trending on Board Game Geek, you can get tens of thousands of people to come play it. So it's a really neat way to get people to try out your game. Alternatively, if you've made a mod that's entirely yours and you want to promote a little bit and maybe get some play testing to figure out that there's some issues with the game left and right, both of those Discord servers and even the Board Game Geek tabletop simulator community are very good resources and a very good way to get people to come in and just try out your game with you. And there you have it. That's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in relation to Tabletop Simulator within the scope of this video series. Now, if you happen to be in my classroom, you are going to have to submit your own games that you make in Tabletop Simulator. And I wanted to take a couple of minutes really quickly just to show you how I would recommend recording your video in case you're not that familiar with it. If you know perfectly well how to record video gameplay, um, just move on because you probably already know this. But if not, here's a quick introduction to it. So to record your video as you're playing it, I recommend OBS Studio. I really like this software. It's free, it's available across different platforms and it's pretty simple to use. Let me show you what it actually looks like. And this is what the software looks like as I'm recording this to you live. So it is actually recording the screen of the software itself now. So this area in the middle is actually the screen itself, which makes it look like you're just filming within a recording and it well, turns into some sort of a weird inception type of deal. But the software is actually pretty straightforward. You have your scene, which is the area that you have here. It's like a canvas, if you will. You can make multiple of them, but you probably just need one. Um, then you have your sources. So if you click on the plus symbol and you click on display capture, you can capture your display. And for tabletop simulator, this is all you need. You don't even need an actual game capture for certain 3D games that are a little bit more demanding that can be useful. But for Tabletop Simulator, I just use uh, Display Capture and it works just fine. So once you've got that set up, you can click on the Start Recording button here. Right now, uh, it says Stop Recording because I'm actively recording as I'm showing you this. And that will record an MKV file for you, a Matroska file, which is a nice video format, but isn't really accepted by many video editors in case you want to make small changes to it. So if you want to convert that to the more common MP4 format, which is very common actually, all you have to do is go to File, Remux Recordings, drop the MKV file from OBS in here, um, say where you want to save it in the target file and then click on Remux and it'll just take a couple of seconds and you'll have an MP4 file that any editor can easily work with. So once you're done with your video then, all you have to do is upload it to YouTube. You can just put it on your own YouTube channel, get the link, the URL to the YouTube video that you've made and then post that on the submission in the Canvas site. And I promise I'll give a little bit of extra instruction and information about how I actually want you to upload it and where I want you to upload it on Canvas. But in general, it pretty much comes down to that. You record a video of yourself playing and demonstrating the game, you upload it to YouTube and you share that YouTube link with me. And that's all there is to it. That's how you submit a game to my class. And that wraps up the video series. So I hope this was really helpful. I try to keep it as condensed as possible, but once you start recording, you kind of learn that there is a lot more to the software than you originally think. But in any case, I think if you've gone through all these videos, you should be really good with Tabletop Simulator by now and know most of it. So go out there now, make some cool games and share them with me because I'm dying to play them. All right, I'll see you. Bye-bye.